shit <laughs> right now. Um, hi guys, how's it going? Um, happy Sunday. Uh, welcome to Month of Sundays, our second episode. This is Z Lynch, my bass player, playing guitar with us here on Month of Sundays. Until it's safe to add other band members, uh, we've been trying to make sure that we self-isolate and stay in the clear so we can work together during this time period. Uh, we're excited to be back. We moved out to the porch. This is my porch. I wish I could just point and then magically go, but we're still working the magic out of having other people here. But my hot tub garden is just to my left. My little high-class hillbillies upstairs. And this is where I hide out. There's normally a lot of dogs barking because that's what happens when you get a lot of dogs. And uh, we have a lot of guest dogs that come from all over Samstown Point to visit us. But um, we're here tonight and uh, we're going live. It feels, it feels good, it still feels surreal, uh, but it's real. And so one of the songs I kind of wanted to touch on, this is fun for me. This is, uh, first of all, I have to like practice guitar, which uh, that was one of the first questions that I saw. There was another batch of, uh, of questions from you guys. And the first one that pointed out to me that I just saw was from a girl named Heather. She said, how old were you when you started playing guitar? And did you pick it up quickly? And the answer's like, no. Like, I wish it was more natural. I know I, I know that Z's been giving lessons, uh, online lessons? Yeah, Skype, yeah, Skype. And, and I know that I should probably call in for one because then you wouldn't have to drive across town and I'd be paying you specifically and I'd learn how to play my own songs better. But I think I started playing guitar because I started singing so many melodies that well, I mean, the truth be told, I started playing guitar because I went to see George Staculius to convince him to produce my record, and he was like, he handed me a guitar. Uh, it said, Made for Tom Petty, One of Two by Martin. He said, play me a song, and I had a breakup or something. My hair was bright blonde, but it was more like bright orange yellow, and uh, and I, I couldn't really play him a song, and he was like, oh, and he was like, what are you going to do when you go to radio? And he wasn't patronizing about it at all. He was genuinely like, what's your plan? And, uh, and then I knew I didn't have a plan, so if I was going to write melodies, I better learn how to pluck them out. So, but so this, that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to learn how to play my own damn songs because, you know, we go out on tour, we play, we play close to the same set, we throw things in, but we play what everybody knows. And so this has been exploratory for me, and I started thinking about, man, New York, again, I keep thinking about my buddies up there and, uh, and how crazy it is to be in that environment and in those small spaces that you don't really often have to go in. Uh, or go, you know, spend all your time in until now. And, and I was thinking about some of my hardest moments in Brooklyn. Uh, long winters, uh, uh, you know, when I was broken up with uh, my ex. And, uh, and I wrote this song called Broke Dreams. And it was about, you know, Nashville is a small town. Austin down here is a small town. But in some ways, New York City can be a small town. I think especially right now, but uh, even back then when I was trying to go out to the places that felt familiar and not run into the one person I didn't want to see. And... Uh, I started explaining the, the crazy ass shit that I was sleeping and, and dreaming about and my buddy Wes said, it sounds like you got broke dreams. Well, it's been hard hearing from all the friends that our love has come to and then to have the grace. Oh, say to my face, I know breaking up is hard to do and it must be tough on you. Well, don't you lie. Oh, baby, did you have to try so damn hard to break my heart? Cause you know I got broke dreams, broke dreams. I got broke dreams. I got broke dreams, broke dreams. I got Steering clear of hanging red, staying in or traveling out of town. But did you think you're the only one that needs a drink? Yeah, I swear if I see you hanging round again, and you don't try to make amends, I'll back you right. Oh, baby, don't you even try to be good friends. That was the end. Make me 
I'm going to show you all a before and after photo of what a live stream looks like with Nikki Lane. And then turn it around, turn this camera and show you this god awful side over here. 122 <laughs> cords, 13 ring lights. I'm just kidding, there's only two, but it's a mess. It's fantastic. It, this is this is fun for me. I, I, I was talking about, you know, bass players now playing guitar, but bass player still needs his damn job and he's right down the street. So uh, we're working it out. And, and I think it's going to be, I've committed to two more of these, right? And I hope you'll keep coming back because why not? But, um, but we're getting clever next week. My girlfriend, uh, Hannah and Ben Rich, the, the couple that worked on uh, the luck thing, they're coming back on board. We're going to, from a distance, do some weird shit. And you got to tell me more crafts, uh, drunk history. You don't want that, but, but you could try it. Uh, whatever you damn want. That's that's it's, it's a challenge. It's a it's a fun challenge. It's keeping this household distracted. Uh, Johnny's over there, you know, across the hall working on a video and a record. It's like this has been an interesting incubation period. Um, I was gonna go straight into this, but I'll go ahead and say it. I wrote this song when I moved to California because my grandmother had passed away. My grandmother was a fiery lady. I think I think somehow she ended up with a brand new Cadillac every two or three years. The other one was wrecked or worn out or she just didn't like the color of the interior or something anymore and uh, had a CB radio and she'd uh, take me to church she'd take me to Michael's craft store she'd tell me to get myself enough shit for $20 to keep myself good and busy and then we'd go to the Piccadilly cafeteria and then I could talk on the CB radio for a little while and uh, she was a badass but you know she had her limits and she knew what path she expected me to take so when I moved to California uh, I found myself, you know, wanting to flirt with danger a little bit. I didn't want to get in too much trouble, but uh, I sure as hell didn't think I wanted her to see. And uh, we're going to play it. It's uh, for a few for a few people. I probably missed some, but Lindsay, Pearl, Nicole, Bill, Jeremy, Daisy, Jessica. But if I'm singing it for anybody tonight, I'm singing it for my friend Ansley Oakley. You've probably seen me talking about, I think she's now 11. Uh, damn, girl. I'm missing time, you know. I hope you don't have a birthday in quarantine. I'll have to mail something. But Ansley Oakley is like one of the coolest uh, songwriters I know. She's a third of my age and uh, and she plays guitar. Maybe this song better than I do. So listen to hers uh, later on at 8, 8.05, you know, when you're done here.
Well, I got a new one for you. Uh, I keep trying to work up the nerve to do a John Prine cover. I don't even know why it's so difficult, but I, but I would do... Well, I have an idea in mind for a duet with Johnny, but I would do Blue Umbrella because I think it's my favorite... One of my favorite songs of all time. I've played it 5,000 times when I thought something was at the edge of, of being over. And so uh, I wrote a song a couple years ago with Ryan Tendall, and I came in and... And I wanted my, you know, my blue umbrella, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to say it. I just wanted to be like, I love John Prine every time I sang it. So uh, I dug it up. I was like, man, this is one I think I, I'd like to bring out. I had sung it a couple times to the guys on the road. And so Z said we could give it a try. It's called uh, Shackle and Chain. It's, uh, I guess to me, when I came out of my marriage, I, when I got divorced when I was younger, I thought about, uh, about being in a relationship where I, where I wasn't trying to tie some shit down. I was just seeing if both of them wanted to stay. Uh, Waylon Jennings, that freedom to stay. Oh, holy shit, you know. So that's what this one's about. I want a big match to your cigarette, a shot glass to your bottle, a trigger to the hammer of your soul, a full tank of gas to the foot on the car. I want a big blue umbrella, get me around, I'll give you all I got, sip just one thing I won't be the fall to your shackle and chain You say you need someone, a lover and a friend Someone who won't get you down, won't never fence you in You been searching high and low Mm, wait. 
I got foolish heart out in there. Oh, I swapped. I got to, that's bad when I write in one and I write <laughs> in two different spots. Which one do you want to do? Well, that one. Well, yeah. Same. Talk about New York City. This is another one I wrote in New York City. I think I wrote it on the 5th of July in, uh, I say, in Picnic Basket Hills. Very tall hills. Hills that were only worn because I had other friends in tall hills. I looked like a, like a mountain. And, uh, and I was on the on the subway and there was a Hasidic man across from me and there's a bunch of little kids on and I was like, oh gosh, well, how do I look right now? And so I wrote this song in my imagination about November 1st, the day after Halloween. And uh, you've decided to be something like a butterfly or something. You got a whole face full of makeup, but you have spent the night in the wrong place. And the next morning you're like a shade of a, I don't know, like peppermint twist or something. It's a big <laughs> ass mess. And you do not have time to wash your face. You just gotta get out of there. And, uh, and this never happened to me before at all, but maybe it's happened to you after one of my shows, I don't know. It's called Walk of Shame. One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, hell, what did you do last night? I got a bass drum thumb in my head. Woke up at the crack of dawn, I was laying in a stranger's bed. He looked nice, but I didn't think twice, cause I knew that I'd done wrong. Looks like he's starting to stir, I better be long gone. Do the walk of shame, won't do it again, won't do it again. Do the walk of shame, won't do it again. Shaking his head cause he knows I don't know. Oh Lord, wash away my sin. I ain't ever gonna do it no more. Do the walk of shame. Sure do. I'm playing this one for Jenny and for Jamie tonight. i 
my mind Foolish heart, I beg you please Let me fall asleep with ease Cause there's no reason I should stay Laying here so wide awake Simply lemonade, mm. a tiny one, and the last bit of mezcal. I gave you the second to the last bit of it was mezcal. A good, it was a good second to last bit. It's Sunday. I didn't think about that kind of thing. That's true. All right, so, well, how are you guys feeling out there? Um, some things I will tell you. Uh, I was There were so many questions this week about social distortion. It's amazing. I don't. Last week there were no questions, but this week it's like, so the first question was, how did you like touring with social distortion? They didn't put a name there, but the answer is awesome. But it was awesome. But then someone else said right after Jason said, I read somewhere that you were on tour with social distortion and they weren't kind to you. That is not accurate. Things that I say maybe get turned around, but they definitely, they get turned around. It's like a game of telephone. What happened is we go out on tour with social D and I'm really excited, you know, like I've got like some teenage dreams coming out. But you get out there and their rooms are big or, you know, we're playing like a hundred and maybe 150 people a night at that time. And they've got 
3,500 people. And these guys are punk rockers. And now they're in their 30s and 40s. And they're, they're not doing anything to me. They're just all wearing black t-shirts. And they all have their arms crossed. And so they're just like, nothing's wrong. They just look like that. And so you play the set. And you get off stage and you're like, did they fucking like it? You're not sure. I'm not certain. You know, and you go out to the merch booth. And to date, there's never been a more... And we've gone on great tours and we somehow like no matter we can open for all kinds of bands and we bring you know we, we make fans out of it it's so fun but but social d takes the cake for like most ever fans that we just see all the fucking time and i'm like yeah so no they weren't mean to me they just were like I, who is this bitch like you know, and, then, and then they're like cool so it's like great and then the last question somebody said tell your favorite story from social distortion and so um, you know, I've gotten to sing like little bits of harmonies or whatever, but I've still never headlined the rhyme, and that's definitely on like my bucket list. And uh, and so my they, the social distortion had a night at the Ryman, and so for us, like that was our hometown show for that tour in Nashville. So we were like, whoo, gussied up, we got all dressed up, but we were playing, and uh, I think I was doing gasoline and matches or something. But I know that I thought maybe it was Alex, his guitar, he was like on fire, he was killing it because we were playing in the Ryman. But everyone started like roaring, like just yeah, in the middle of my song, and I'm like, fuck yeah, madass, you know, like, people, like it's not even like at a moment, you know. So it's just like, you know, people they love us. Yeah. And then I turn around, and Mike is like moon walking, like just all the way across the stage, you know, just like just like walks and doot doot, you know. And it was fucking awesome. I don't care if they were roaring for him. It felt like it was my <laughs> moment, and I realized it was his moment. But he was giving me a moment. He shared it with me. And so that's it, exactly how that experience. I hope you guys take me on the road again. I was on the phone with their manager and my, our good friend, and he's been my manager for a while, uh, Shane Trulin. Awesome. And I said, uh, did you see this social distancing shirt? You've got to make one of those. You know, Everybody calls me Hurricane Lane. Well, then there was really a Hurricane Lane, but it was coming after Hawaii. You're not going to make that. You make that. When everything's good, you make the I Survived Hurricane Lane shirt. But I was like, you need to make this social distancing shirt. So they did, and it's awesome. It's like the old school Social D logo, but it says social distancing. All the money goes to Music Cares. No one's got any money, but that's a great place to put it because they're really taking care of musicians right now. But we all need it, so just got to find ways to not get too nervous and pass it around I'm trying to shop lots of small businesses and uh, and order local someone told me about the Barton mill I ordered shit loads of blue and purple cornmeal nice. I don't know what I'm doing I'm not what am I gonna do with 14 pounds of that shit cook it mm -hmm. could you come over for some cornbread when it's safe Fuck yeah so what else is on here oh gosh well we're gonna play you a cover song tonight and uh, I, I wanted this one on here early on. I've, I've always said we were going to play it on tour, and whew, every time I go on a, on a trip to Montana or, you know, get, get really, really remote, this is the song that comes into my head. It's one of the most beautiful songs, but it's perfect for uh, isolation and, 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 and a moment where you feel you need to get away. So let's pretend it was our choice. This is Mr. Bobby Charles' uh, Tennessee Blues.
right, I can pretend. I can pretend we're all in the same room. I never thought about it. There better not be a lot of people clapping in your house or you're breaking the rules, but... It's probably for tons more people, but the list has gotten so long that I'm trying to get ahead of it. I'm going to start closing the list two days in advance so I can highlight everything. It's a silly little project to highlight what you said. I decide if I feel like I should answer that on air. And uh, But uh, jackpot tonight, because this is the names I came across, and because it's generally for them, but for all of you. Uh, we got Sharon, Chuck, Tony, MB, Adam, June, April, Gwen, Heather, that was awesome. It feels great. Thank you for texting me and asking me questions and telling me what to play. I'm going to play what I want, but I want to know what you think. Um, we've got time for a few more. This one's going to be dedicated to Patrick and Meredith. This was the song they danced to to their wedding. I started thinking about, you know, I idealized a perfect, a perfect love, you know, a really soft-spoken, true love. And so, uh, and I wrote this song called Companion. For that and uh and so this is for you patrick and meredith i hope you're holding up and uh and have a really nice evening tonight Can't you if I can? You can. 
love makes do. So darling, I'm asking you, do you want me? Oh, can you see yourself in me? to think about how easy it is to play 700,000 rednecks on guitar right now. Um, my shameless plug to you of the evening is uh, someone asked me where I'm getting where I get all my high class hillbilly stuff and we know uh, or I've said it a million times that the way I get all this stuff is by being out on tour. It is my joy to build relationships with the really cool quirky dealers and antique malls all around America and even the fleet fleet flaw mock nods or whatever in Sweden. Like anywhere we can get this shit, the older the better. It's it's my pleasure. But right now, I've been limited to one little dealer um, by the name of Keith Mars and he has a store in Dallas called Vagabond. And we did a no contact. I went into the warehouse and I made his little stash. So you see Z, he's been forced <laughs> to model. Uh, we needed to take a break and he got swindled. And Jesse, our friend here. Um, and so we're just gonna run a little shop down here. So I started this uh, little thing. We're gonna make a little care package. And so everything's gonna come from here. It's gonna help the girls out. And, uh, and it's going to give me my true joy of buying and selling shit like Beatles t-shirts. And uh, mm. so she made a little section on High Class Hillbilly for that. And uh, I made a little care package. You can order. I'll show you what I did. It's, it's pretty funny. Well, you can be the judge of that. But you don't get all these. But we took lots of Polaroids because I just figured I'd send you Polaroids of me doing stuff. I don't know. Maybe no one wants this. But there's also an Austin, Texas patch. And... Uh, People say that their friends ha are having birthdays that are quarantined and they want me to send a message. This is how I'd like to send the message. I'd like to write a little note and you'll see how bad my handwriting truly is. And that's it. Look at that. And I'd like to give a big special thing to Josh Werblin, our uh, tour manager tour turned into live stream producer. It is our pleasure to have you out there. Um, we're going to play two more songs starting with 700,000 Rednecks with Z on the guitar for the first time ever.
Well, Bam Z, I'd say this has been a pretty enjoyable second episode. <laughs> I look forward to your constructive criticism only on these comments, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me what I can do better. Tell me what you want to see. Is it a craft? Is it a, is it a how to hang your picture stoned? We'll do it. We're having a, we're having a good time. Um, I promised two new songs today, and I was going to play Hiding Out for y'all. And then, I, and then I got distracted by Shackle and Chain. I really wanted to do that one instead. And, and that's the deal, right? I get to play what I want. And that, that's really fun because by the end of this, if I do a fifth week, and I mark my words, it'll be all ten songs for the new record because now I've almost finished the last few that I was in limo about. And, uh, but this one, I'm really excited. Um, I'd like to say one thing. I'd like to say thank you to Jody, who is one of my girlfriends, one of my great girlfriends who's living across at Samstown Point here, for being a good friend and helping us get this show to happen this week. Johnny, Tyler, for helping us get this show going this week. It's taken so many people to lend me little pieces of shit uh, to put around this thing to make this work. And, uh, and I appreciate it. I appreciate True Grit, my management, and uh, Chris, their tech guy, is, is making sure this is possible. Even this simple little... Uh, whatever the fuck this is on the porch, you know, it's, it's been a group effort and, and I think it's kept us all uh, moving and inspired, so it's been really nice. Um, but I started working on some songs in Tennessee right before I came here with a guy named Gabe Simon. He is from South Carolina. We did not, maybe he knew that, but I didn't know that until the second time we hung out. And I was like, holy shit, like the, the, the Christian school that I kept begging my mom to let me go to, maybe that's confusing, but that's where all the cool skater, like progressive, smart, still straight edge or whatever, you know, still good kids, whatever, I don't know what they were. We were all chilling. I was trying to get in this private Christian school. Well, it turns out Gabe was there four years later or something, but I swear to God, going to Scuffle Town, which is the two-step in Honky Tonk, and, uh, and riding around in some of those weird places in the shitty skate park, I think we had a commonality, and so we wrote some great songs, and you're going to hear a bunch of them, I think, or a few of them on my record, and, and more if, if I can get back there and write with him. But the point of this story is my last song tonight, uh, I, it, it seems crazy now to even think about, but on February 15th, our little kitten got ran over in the yard, and, and, on, and on February 15th, I thought that was going to be the weirdest, worst day of the year. And uh, I was really devastated, because I thought we had done everything we could to let this little guy we had brought in do his thing and continue to do his thing and then he died and I was bummed the fuck out and I had to get up and go right with Gabe and I just did not want to and I was gonna make an excuse up and then I sat in the tub and I smoked a joint and I sat back and I daydreamed that I got as high as I did for the first time which was like mind eraser shit you know what I mean but if I could have done that right then I mean that'd be unhealthy I would have been able to numb out of my terrible tragedy of losing my cat but I started thinking about that first that first high, that first kiss, that first, you can still get those, but you gotta try lots of cool shit, you know what I mean, so that you can get a first again, and, and I started thinking about this, and I went in, and I said, Cheryl Crow, Lucinda Williams, first high, and then we started talking about it, and I started talking about how I used to sneak out with my mom's car, and I knew that if I drove to Woodruff, which was 14 miles, there was a gas station called The Rays, and we had a tab under Freddy, which is my dad's name, it was our asphalt paving tab, and they wouldn't notice my little tank of gas because they were filling up big old trucks. So I'd sneak down there, I'd fill my tank full of gas, I'd get some Chico sticks and some Coca-Colas, and I'd haul my ass to Atlanta for a concert. And that's what this is about. It's a brand new song, and uh, it'll definitely be on my record, and, and this is the first time ever, and I bet I've about talked y'all to sleep. But y'all, y'all gonna be alright, hang on. I can't tell what the rules are. This is definitely too much talking. There are no rules. If we were on tour. But. It's the Wild West. Cheering 
somebody asked me if I had a spark much this was our second episode of month of sundays i've got two more for you i really want to get johnny in here for a duet night uh turn tune in tomorrow on to jonathan tyler uh Jonathan tyler on instagram he's releasing a video for um his new song underground forever another single's coming out called hustling the video's badass he took a hold of one of my favorite suits and uh he didn't ask to borrow it but i'm glad he fucking did no he did ask to borrow it but i was watching it like a hawk 1930s he's digging a hole a big asshole and i want you to see it tomorrow and uh that's it i'm just gonna keep doing this until you tell me stop but then i'm probably gonna do it anyways just for less people good night josh what are we supposed to do now we didn't work out an ending <laughs> 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 <Let's leave. laughs>